Hello, everybody. Jim Malone here coming to you live on Dallas Trading Floor. And it is Tuesday. Uh, we definitely saw uh, a bounce back today after the huge sell off. Um, I was, uh, uh, I did, uh, uh, as you know, I, I, I uh, took a position in Charles Schwab on the after hours on Monday. I did sell it this morning as it bounced back. Uh, we are also seeing some bounce back on some of the other um, on some of the other financial stocks, but other than that, I am completely out of the market. I am all cash right now, uh, waiting for some more opportunities uh, in the market. Um, just wanted to show you uh, a chart of the XLF. This is the Energy Select. This is the spider that is in the financial sector. So let's take a look at this one just real quick. Um, and see, you know, if we can kind of see anything there that uh, might give us some opportunities. Uh, basically, what's going on here is, you know, we did recover today. Uh, as you can see, huge, a lot of action coming in here. Uh, on Thursday of last week, I shorted the XLF. I wrote it down, and then I did cover that short. Uh, and now it's moving back up. So, um, you know, don't know if I'm going to go long here, but uh, we definitely had a lot of action. It was up uh, basically uh, 2%, but uh, what's interesting about this one is it was up um, 127, 127% in terms of the volume. So a lot of people coming into the XLF basically to hedge against their positions that they might hold in some of the bank stocks. Uh, I also did... Um, I, I also did buy uh, yesterday at the close. I bought uh, I bought Charles Schwab. It moved up very nicely today. It was a dead cat bounce, but uh, I'll take it. Um, uh, and uh, SCWB, I think is the is that right? And uh, SCW S S C H W. I think that's it. Uh, is that it? Yeah, Charles Schwab. There we go. So this gives us kind of a good good look see at the Charles Schwab chart. Really interesting. Um, again, on you know Monday with the news, of course, on on um, Silicon Valley Bank over the weekend, uh, Silicon uh, Charles Schwab plunged, and uh, this is when I bought it. I bought it basically after hours, and you can see it just it just it gapped down and then it gapped right back up. This is what they call a dead cat bounce. Just wanted to put that up there for everybody that has never ever uh, always wondered what that is. It's a dead cat bounce, and basically, it's kind of if uh, if you throw a cat on the floor and it's dead, and it will bounce. Well, that's terrible, but that's that's what it that's that's what it that's what it is. So sometimes these are good opportunities when everyone is panicking to wait until uh, the shorts have been taken out and then buy it, and then it typically will. We'll move back up, but uh, I don't have anything for you right now, unfortunately. Um, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to find some other opportunities here. One of the things, though, you have to be really careful in this market. Um, I'm currently all in cash. I mean, I did close all my both my short and my long positions. Uh, you know, very quickly. This is really kind of a day trading strategy, not uh, necessarily in terms of a long term investment. The market is in correction, and so it's a good idea to cease you know, any kind of long-term stock purchase right now, go all to cash, go 100% to cash. That's going to give you a, a lot of nice traction uh, because there will be opportunities coming up here, no doubt. And uh, one of the ones I've seen, of course, is in uh, interesting area, uh, the tanker area. This is a odd area, but uh, right now, because of the war in the Ukraine, we are seeing a lot of action in some of the tanker stocks which uh, is, is very unusual. But let's look at TK Tankers. TNK is the symbol on that one. TNK. I don't own this one. I've been trying to figure out how to buy it, right, because it definitely has reversed, and it's reversing higher. Uh, so that's something that, uh, you know, we could definitely take advantage of here. Um, this is an area that has been very strong. Look at the after-hours numbers. It's up almost 2% in the after-hours trading at 45 47 
uh, this is a definite bounce off of the, um, you know, off of the uh, 21 day line. So what happened is it came on down to that 21 day line and then boom, it bounced right back up. And uh, we're seeing, you know, we're seeing some nice action on that. I'm going to go to the 30 minute chart here. That'll give us kind of an idea of sort of what happened. The bounce was right here at about 41. Let's uh, ch flick on over so show everybody on TikTok what I'm talking about here. Uh, this is TK Tankers, symbol T and K on this one. Um, it came down here. It bounced uh, right at about 41. And then and then now it's pulled off a little bit. But in the after hours trading, it's going to go up. And I suspect we're going to – this would be a nice open tomorrow. We may see this go up uh, uh, as much as uh, up to – maybe about uh, 48. I'm planning on buying this one probably in the after hours, just a relatively small position, a half position, and uh, and sort of hopefully writing this one up. But uh, it is looking very interesting to me. Again, this is the group that we want to be looking at. I have another kind of interesting list that I want to put out there to everybody that's watching here uh, on the channel. Uh, and that is the list of the leaderboard list here. And uh, we have some good ones on here. And I think some of these are actionable. Uh, I kind of want to look at these, each uh, each individual charts. The first one on the list, of course, is Copart. This is uh, actually a company, CPRT. It's actually based here in Dallas. And what they are is they're kind of a conglomeration of junkyards that typically buys wrecked cars from the insurance industry. I'd say it's a very interesting business. It's kind of a it's kind of a franchise junkyard thing. Very, very profitable, though. Let's take a look at the chart on, on Copart here. This one also came down. It, it, it came down to the 50-day line, and it bounced nicely. So I definitely think this one is an upward trend as well. I'm going to just draw a reversal line there to show you kind of what I'm talking about here. So this is one you might want to put on your list, Copart, C-P-R-T. Again, none of these, uh, none, none of these are... For these are just for informational purposes. Um, you know, I'm not recommending anything here, but uh, it is interesting. There are some opportunities out there that I wanted to kind of put out there for everyone. Another one that I'm very interested in is LSCC. This is Lattice Semiconductor. Lattice Semiconductor is a major part supplier for um, uh, for the Tesla vehicles. Uh, so this one definitely has some nice uptick in terms of potential. This one, I think, is a little bit safer bet here. I did play this one, just day traded this this morning, uh, but I didn't, uh, you know, but I, I closed it before the end of the day. I've always been very, very cautious in this market, saying mostly in cash, but this one did. It is almost at, high, at, at a new high uh, as it moves over 92.48. So, one of the things that you might want to look at here, and I want to show you this on the checklist. This has a hundred percent checklist. Uh, this, this is this is a hundred percent checklist uh, for Lattice Semiconductor. It's uh, it's within fifteen percent of its all-time high. There's lots of funds that are in it, and uh, it is increasing profitability. This is uh, really interesting because. Normally, we look primarily at the technical action, but this has both the technical and the fundamental action. The fundamental action, of course, uh, if we look at the if we look at the charts, last quarter that uh, that it has reported was the December quarter. This is the in 2022. Their sales were up 24 percent, and their profits, and this is the key, were up 53 percent quarter over quarter. So we're looking at very very strong action on this stock. Any stock typically that can that can move up in sales 20% a quarter, that's a strong stock and a stock that's very, very well worth looking at uh, for a potential uh, entry on. Uh, again, you can see where I, where I purchased uh, here, uh, basically a, a half position, uh, uh, basically on the 3rd of February. I did sell those at a profit, and now I'm waiting for another re-entry here in the stock. But again, liking to see these kind of stocks out there because it's these kind of stocks, even in this bad market, we can trade because they are at the very, very top of the um, of, of the rank. We typically like to talk, we typically like to deal with stocks that are in the top 5%. And that's definitely the case here. Um, let's also look at Ulta Beauty. This is a very expensive stock, about $500 a share, but very, very well worth it. ULTA. This is at the top 
of the retail category, uh, and it is it is doing well. I have not uh, I have not been trading Ulta Beauty. Uh, there's some other alternatives here. Uh, El, there's another one called Elf Beauty. And there's one called Sally Beauty. They're beauty supply exchange. They typically do well in recessions. So kind of an interesting stock, kind of a counter cyclical stock that you might want to take a look at. Um, these these guys had excellent earnings and it definitely, uh, you know, but it didn't pop on earnings. I definitely think though it will catch up to them. There was nice action today. It was up about uh, almost a percent and uh, uh, up the volume was up as well. So looking pretty, looking pretty decent there in terms of that. Let's look at the, uh, at, at the checklist here, not quite as good as LSCC. It's only a, it's only an eighty nine percent checklist, but very very good overall. So that's one you might want to look at uh, as well. All right. Well, thank you very much for that little intro. Uh, let's uh, let's go to some questions here. Thanks for uh, thanks for holding on, everybody. Are you still holding Schwab? This is a really good question. No, I sold Schwab. Uh, I sold Schwab this morning. Um, uh, and I sold it on the bounce. Uh, we did very well overnight on Schwab. And then uh, what I did is I just, as I always do, uh, when I get a dead cat bounce like this, I will sell my shares by pushing up my stop loss. And uh, let's go over to Schwab and I'll show you, show you kind of my action on that one. SC, um, uh, SCHW Schwab. There we go, Charles Schwab. So let's put that up there on the charts for everybody, so they can see. I think, yeah, you can see that. You can see where I bought it. I have marked these, and then what happened is, what I did is I bought here, uh, you know, basically below this blue line. And then what I did is that uh, I set a stop loss and I kept moving it up. Let's go to the thirty-minute chart to kind of show you what happened. There you go. That's where I sold it right here, right about 56. So you can see that this is actually kind of a simple strategy, but I love the strategy. When a stock gaps down like this, not all the time, but when it, when a stock that you know this good, it gaps down, what you do is you typically will buy it after hours. I, I didn't quite get in on it until the after hours, but I got it right about here in the after hours action. And then I held it. And then what I did is I just kept pushing up that stop loss and as you can see, my sell price, uh, and I think I have marked that on the chart. You can see that. Let's look at the, uh, let's see if we can look at that. Yeah, there we go. So reactivate that one. And what I, all I'm doing here is I'm just showing you kind of, yeah, there we go. So that kind of gives, kind of gives you my action on that one. My stop loss basically uh, was at 56.85. That's where I sold out. But again, I was buying right about 50. So we made a nice little pop on that one. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just haven't really found anything since. So kind of a weird, kind of weird. Oh, he, he, excellent. You got in at 46. Nice. You sold at 55. Very, very good action. This is, uh, yeah, I, I, that's very good action. So, yeah, you made, you made nine points on that one, basically. That's very good. That's a very good trade. Um, yeah, you you should you should pat yourself on the back. That's a very very good trade on Schwab. Again, sometimes we're going to get you know these panic buyers. Typically, what happens is these are panic sellers. They're going to panic. They're going to sell. It's going to push the stock down, and then that's when you want to kind of see when the volume dries up. I look at the ten minute chart on that to find out where the the volume buys up. When that volume dries up, then you want to buy at that point, and uh, that can be very very profitable. Way to go. All right, let's go over to, to YouTube here. And hey, uh, thanks. Hey, Jim. Uh, do you think DCA dollar cost averaging is good for investing? Well, it depends on if you're an investor or if you're a trader. Um, if you're an investor and you're buying ETFs, those are exchange traded funds, dollar cost averaging works great because you, dollar cost averaging works great. If you're a trader, no. If you're a trader, you want to find the leaders and trade the leaders. You don't want to trade that. So if you're if you are trading exchange traded funds ETFs like the XLF, you, dollar cost averaging works very 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 well. So that if you if you're going to go and and do something like that, 
that's what you want to do. Now, really, if you're going to, if you're, if you're just starting out uh, and, and, and you want, and you have, and your time horizon is six months or more, take a look at, uh, you know, probably dollar cost averaging into something like, um, you know, and right now you can't do it. The reason why, of course, is because we're in this downward trend. Okay. But when this trend changes to a green circle, and I'll actually put that up for everybody, when, when we go into a market in a confirmed uptrend, that's where you want to get into one of the, um, one of the index funds. I would recommend just starting out looking at the uh, spider. That's the original one. Uh, and uh, it is a very good way to, to, to get in here. I'm going to show you kind of what I'm talking about here. Right now, we wouldn't want to be in, we wouldn't want to be buying the spider. We want to be in cash. Why? Because the market isn't a confirmed downtrend. It's, a, it's in correction. So we don't want to be holding uh, for very long. We want to be careful here. But when the market changes direction, and it will, uh, when it changes direction to a confirmed uptrend, that's where we want to be making a buy of the spider. Uh, and basically, the very simple strategy, when the market trend changes to a confirmed uptrend, you want to be buying the spider. When it moves to a uptrend under pressure, you want to sell half of it, be half in cash. And then when we're in a downtrend like it is now, you want to be all in cash. So that kind of gives you some protection. By the way, if you do this ETF strategy, it will you will you will be able if you do this regularly and you're very very disciplined at this there's a high likelihood that you're going to exceed many hedge funds in terms of your return so just uh this is a back tested method uh and i'm probably going to put out a video on exactly what i'm talking about here uh in in this um in, in uh, doing this but it's a great way to go and uh but here's the thing just to answer the question once again um uh, dollar cost averaging is good if you are investing for the six month horizon or better. Uh, and it's best to do it with ETFs and not individual stocks. If you're trading, you don't want to use dollar cost averaging. All right. Good question. Uh, hi, the VIX is showing no fear. <laughs> that is true. You're absolutely right. Let's, uh, let's jump on over to the VIX chart. Uh, <clears throat> and see what's going on there. Um, this is the CBOE, the, the Chicago Boards of Options volatility chart. <coughs> and this is, this is kind of what's going on there. Huge spike yesterday, as you can see. It went basically from, you know, all the way down here, basically at about 19, 18, all the way up to 30 in one day, and then and then it continued up. Now it's down. But don't expect this to stay down. I suspect we're going to see a spiky day tomorrow. Uh, I don't necessarily think we're going to get a sell-off tomorrow, but I do think that we're likely to see um, we're likely to see more um, you know, more people get out of the market. So that's the one thing, is that's why we want to be right now, we want to be we want to be in cash right now. We want to be in cash right now because there will be opportunities. We will see probably another leg down. I suspect, um, you know, on the spider, we're looking at probably at least uh, at least it going down to um, uh, let's, let's let's take a look at the spider chart here. But here's what I think is going to happen. And of course, it's always it's always tough to to, to do to predict anything. But the support seems to be right about here on the spider. And if, that, and if that's true, then the support price for the spider currently is at about 380. Now, I was saying originally 390, but I think three, it's at 391 right now. I definitely think we have some support at, um, at 380. But here's the problem. The, 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 uh, uh, the spider has come up to um, it, it, it's it's come up to the 200-day moving average, which is uh, right about 390. And if it if it if it gets resistance here, and I think it's likely to tomorrow, I think we could go down. If it breaks below, if the spider breaks below that 380 level, then I think we're going to take another leg down, and uh, we could easily go down to 340 uh, 348 here easily, 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 because that's where the that's where the last test back in October was 
of the low lower low on the spider. So I definitely think there's a very good possibility that if we break below 380 uh, this week on the spider, we're probably headed lower. So uh, there you go. All right, somebody, uh, D Griff 777 on TikTok, it wants to take a look at, at the Bank of America, BAC. Of course, this is one of the four money center banks. The money center banks, of course, the largest bank is J.P. Morgan Chase. Then you have, um, then then you have Citi. Then you have uh, Bank of America, and then Wells Fargo. Um, you know, it did bounce here. We we had it. We had a nice bounce on it. But look at what's happening with Bank of America in the after hours. Okay, it's off in the after hours. I think that this may we may see a leg lower on Bank of America. I mean, it's here's the thing. Many of the money center banks basically are not lending right now. They they've stopped a lot of these stopped lending mortgages, uh, and so you know they're sort of in a defensive mode right now. So I don't know. Um, you know, I don't think that Bank of America is gonna is get, there's gonna be a run on them, but uh, like there was at Silicon Valley Bank and um, uh, in First Republic. By the way, First Republic is is uh, it's not truly a run yet. But they closed uh, several other banks. I'm probably familiar with Signature Bank. This is a crypto lender. Crypto in general is in trouble. Any bank that has crypto exposure is toxic. So you want to be super careful. Uh, you just want to be super, super careful on anything that has crypto exposure. So, uh, you know, you've got to be careful uh, with that. All right. Let's see. Thank you for liking me on the live. Oh, uh, Yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be buying, uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah. <laughs> Silicon Bank is in shambles. Absolutely it is. Sell half of my S&P and buy, uh, buy up threat. Well, I think that right now it's a better time. Uh, what do you think will happen to the S, uh, SIVP stocks? Well, I think it's going to go out. I, I think, I think it's already happened. I think every stockholder, uh, is going to lose uh, all the equity and the bondholders are going to lose uh, in Silicon Valley Bank. They're they're, they're going to get wiped out, and there's going to be a separate bank. Matter of fact, they've already named it. It's called Bank. Of, I think it's called Bank of Santa Clara. Uh, Santa Clara, of course, being the city where Silicon Valley Bank is um, is, is based was based. Um, I think that you know you're going to see it. The uh, right now, it says that the stock is trading at 106.04, but I think that this is going to get wiped out in the next few days. Um, I think trading has been halted in Silicon Valley Bank. We're taking a look here at the um, at the at the 30 at the uh, 30 minute chart here. Uh, as you can see, just huge selling. The people that got out of the burning house are there, but they halted it, and uh, and and you know, so the so the real value of Silicon Valley Bank may be, I, I think it's zero right now. Uh, that's, that's my, that's my, uh, that's my guess. So the, the stockholders are going to be, um, going to be, uh, um, are, are going to be wiped out. All right. Let's see. Uh, bleeding red. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why we want to be in cash. Remember, this is really, really key. When you're long, when you're long on any stock, you want to set a stop loss seven percent below where you bought it, always, because uh, these these kind of things can happen. Now, the people that had market stop losses on Silicon Valley Bank, uh, you know, were well, they weren't totally protected because the because it was there was a gap down here, you see, but at least they got out. The people that didn't have stop losses, they have they're 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 going to lose they're going to lose all of their equity here. So not a really great situation altogether. All right, well, let's take a few more questions and that will be it probably. Um, should I buy SBNY puts? Well, let's look at it. I wouldn't buy puts. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't buy puts on, on anything right now. If you're going to short anything right now, you want to, at least in the banking sector, you want to short the actual stock. You don't want to have puts because puts can run into problems in a in a rapidly falling stock. This was up in the after hours. Very interesting. Seventy one uh, fifty. Um, you know this this looks like there's got a dead cat bounce on this one. 
too. So you could probably come in there in the after hours and buy it. It's up 2.17%. If I did buy this one in the after hours, I would immediately put a buy stop limit order on this one uh, to protect myself. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is going to give probably a dead cat bounce. So let's take a look. Yeah. So it looks like it hit a floor at 70. This is a SB in Y here that we're looking at. Uh, and uh, yeah, it definitely looked like it hit. Let's see if I can show everybody on TikTok what I'm talking about there. Okay. So that's what, that's what happened. Interesting, uh, interesting thing. All right. Well, let's go to the next question. Thank you, Roman, for, uh, for, for, for being, for taking that. Okay. Yeah. My after hours shorts, uh, Silicon Valley bank halted. Okay. It halted. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Roman. That's great for you uh, bringing that up. Uh, Roman is saying that basically uh, Silicon Valley banks halted at 39.4. So, but everyone's going to lose them. It was everything here. They're not going to bail out. Uh, they're they're going to bail out the people that had deposits over 250,000, but they're not going to bail out the equity and the bondholders. I mean, and the, the, they're not going to hold the, uh, they're not going to bail them out. So the equity holders of Silicon Valley bank are going to, you're going to take it in the shorts. Now it's very controversial that they are going to insure the the uh, the deposits above two hundred fifty thousand. The reason that they're doing this, of course, is that you have huge payrolls that are in uh, at Silicon Valley Bank, and if they didn't do this, the payrolls would go down. So that's why they're doing it for political, not uh, not other reasons. So be very careful. This may set a precedent, but I have a feeling that uh, it may get very it may actually be more dangerous now because this will empty the FDIC fund and uh, it, that's what it looks like so if we have failures um, going forward um, I think that you know people over two hundred fifty thousand dollars that's the FDIC insurance limit will probably be wiped out so be very very careful putting anything above $250,000 in any Federal Reserve Bank. So probably best to have uh, it spread around a little bit. All right. Would you buy Walmart or PACW? Uh, uh, Pac Let's look at PACW here. ECW. Uh, oh, Pacific. Oh, no, I wouldn't. I, yeah, there's a dead cat bounce. This is interesting. This is what I was talking about. This is the dead cat bounce. But unfortunately, the time to have bought it, unfortunately, was yesterday. This did a dead cat bounce, but no, I would not buy. I would not buy Pacific Bank Corp. I would not buy this because I, I just, I just cannot be. I, I cannot be assured that uh, we won't see it just move. We won't see see it move up and then and then re and then move down. This spike here, this blue spike, this this is because of short squeeze this is people covering their shorts positions so that's what i think is is going on there so i would not be a buyer of pacw and let's look at uh wal i think you mean i don't know if you mean walmart or not but let's look at wal oh western alliance bank Corp. okay thank you for that thank you for that roman appreciate it all right no i wouldn't buy western alliance either <laughs> These are not looking good. The 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 regional banks are going to be also very very uh, be careful. Of the regional banks like Zions, I wouldn't buy Zions. I probably wouldn't buy Comerica, even though I bank there. Um, I think you got to be super duper careful buying the the. Now you have to be very careful buying the banks in general. So, um, I think that this is going to lead to a pullback in the. Um, uh, in, in, in the Russell 2000 or, and the S&P because about a third of all the stocks that are in the, the uh, S&P 500 are financials. So in their, their banks, a lot of them are regional banks. So that's where we're going to see probably some more weakness there. So it, it's kind of confusing. But right now, your best position, I believe, on a daily basis, I, I'm, I'm all cash right now. Um, just waiting for opportunities, basically the day trade opportunities, um, because I do think that we may see another leg down here and, uh, that would be not fun 
that would be not fun for a lot of people. Though we can make money, uh, though we can make money on that. Do you recommend holding Schwab for the long term? No, I do not. Um, again, I bought Schwab as I as I said in my my show yesterday. I did buy Schwab after hours. I wrote it up today. When it started pulling back, I was out. So that was really a day trade for me. So I don't recommend holding Schwab, at least until we see a stronger market, because I do think that it may adjust lower. But who knows? I mean, Schwab is a very good company, but they hold about a trillion dollars in assets. So uh, if they went down, obviously, they would be they would be uh, backed up by the government because it would take the whole banking system down, kind of like uh, um AIG uh, back in 2008. Um, so I definitely think that we would you would see that, but I don't I don't recommend them right now. Uh, it's just it's too it's too volatile. I mean I think it's a day trade or a or a you know or a, a swing trade, but nothing more. All right, thank you very much for watching the show. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, okay, thank you, thank you. All right, so if you haven't, I want to just to bring up something. My friend Gavin McMaster in Australia, um, he's, he's basically the, uh, the columnist for the options uh, for the Investor Business Daily. He has a course, and uh, he's offering a special, but you have to order it through, you have to order it through me. <laughs> you have to order it through me. I'm going to put this up on the screen. It's, it's, uh, you can get uh, Gavin's course by going to https colon slash slash stan.store slash Dallas trading floor. And that will give you the, the options trading course. It is a great deal. I've taken it myself. I paid full price, but special for Dallas trading floor people only 147, but it's only until the 30th of March. And on the 30th of March, the course starts. It's a great course. Believe me, if you want to learn how to make money in a sideways market, this is the course you want to take. There are other courses out there, more expensive, less expensive. But I tell you what, there's very, very few people out there like Gavin. He really knows the stuff. And, uh, you know, he will show you the combinations that you can use to profit during this period of uncertainty in the market. And we're definitely coming into a, a period of uncertainty in the market. Uh, so that is it's a it's a great course. Gavin McMaster's course uh, and uh, something that you definitely want to uh, to take a look at. I made a little uh, I made a little video on it. Let's see if we can pull that up. Uh, I made a I made a little video on. Uh, did I did I get it? Let's see if I let's see if I have this one out here. Um, a lot of videos out here, don't I? Um, You might want to take a look at this one. I kind of, I haven't cut it completely yet, but it's a it's a great little thing. Um, and because it's okay, where am I not seeing it? I'm not seeing it. <laughs> anyway, I think this. Yeah, there we go. So this is what I recorded with Gavin. Hey, Jim Malone here from Dallas Trading Floor. I really have a special guest today. It's Gavin McMaster from Australia, and he is an options trading expert. And uh, Gavin, um, just like you to explain a little bit about uh, yourself and uh, your course and, uh, and options in general. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Jim. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I've been trading options since about 2004, so I've um, been at this a long time. I've been teaching other traders since 2010. Uh, currently write a daily article for Investors Business Daily, as I think you're aware, and also for Bar Chart. And yeah, I've been teaching options for a long time now. Um, I've, I've had sort of thousands of people go through these courses that I run. Um, I, I just love it. It's, like you, it's my passion, you know, um, and I love teaching people as well. Um, so it's great to be able to combine those two passions. Um, and, and it's just that awesome feeling when, you know, you, you speak to someone and they get that kind of light bulb moment of, oh, I get it now. And I, I never knew that before. And like, I just, I love that. Well, I tell you, for me, it stuff. was really, um, it was um, still trading a little bit. I tell you, for me, it was really a revelation when I took your course. I mean, I learned so much, uh, so many things. Uh, that, that that I didn't know, and you know, I've I've been trading on and off for 
God, over 20 years, you know, God, time goes by. I tell you, it does. But uh, it, it was really exciting. Uh, you know, first of all, of course, I didn't know you initially. And, you know, I, I'm very much follow the Investor Business Daily. And, I, you know, when, you're, 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 when your column came out, I was so excited because finally somebody was, you know, dealing with, with options. What I'd like to do, Gavin, is I'd just like you to go through a few of your strategies I'm going to put a, a, a slide up on the screen, and if you could just, just generally um, describe them, that would be fantastic. Yeah, sure. So calendar spreads, <clears throat> excuse me, um, where you're selling a short-term option and then buying a longer-term option against it. Uh, it's a positive vague trade, so it does well when volatility inks. Um, and it's a good one to do, as you've got there, when the market's in backwardation, which is when short-term volatility is higher than longer-term volatility. And what we're basically doing is we're selling that high volatility uh, in the front month or the front week, and then we're buying the lower volatility in the back month or the back week. And, you know, you can think of volatility, as you know, volatility is so important as an option trader. Um, and you can kind of think of it like a stock. You know, you want to buy low and sell high, or if you're shorting, you want to sell buy buy low and it's the same idea with calendar spreads where we're selling that high volatility short-term option and we're buying the longer term lower volatility so we're taking advantage of option skew so getting into some advanced stuff here um, on the first strategy but um, you know then you can do things like double calendars um, and things like that wow that's really exciting gavin i you know i i tell you what i uh, you know i knew a few of these strategies going in but i was not nearly until i took your course i just i just didn't really you know understand a lot of stuff and and uh i definitely you know again i just reaching out to my the people that are on uh the dallas trading floor um you know this is a great way to learn options i mean it it goes from intermediate to advanced but definitely beginners shouldn't shy away from this either because there are many fantastic strategies here that just really really work another one i would like to kind of talk to you about is um, a kind of a complicated one it's directional credit spreads can you fill us in on this because this works both in a bull and a bear market and we're going we're probably going into a bear market so good time to kind of learn some of this some of these strategies yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the beauty of options is that you can, and that's how I first got interested in them, is you can make money when stocks are going down, which is awesome, right? Rather than being stuck in that buy and hold mentality where you're you know, subject to the whims of the market. If the market's going down, you're just losing money. Whereas, you know, with options, you can trade bearish strategies and strategies that do well when the market drops. So um, credit spreads are basically uh, a vertical spread where you receive a credit for entering that trade. And a, a bear call spread is the bearish version and the bull put spread is the bullish version. And they're one of my bread and butter strategies. And they're a nice one because you don't have to be 100% spot on with the direction. So, for example, with a bear call spread, you put the, the bearish spread above the stock price. And as a little bit, you can still potentially make money on that spread as long as it doesn't rise too much. So... It's not an aggressive strategy. It's more of that sort of income strategy um, where you're generating that premium and looking to sort of defend that premium over the course of the week or the month. Um, and as I said, the beauty of it is you don't have to be perfect on the direction. You can actually, um, if the, the market moves against you, as long as it doesn't move too much, you can actually st still do pretty well. Well, you know, I really think it's exciting. I'm just going to add one more strategy. I know that you have tons of strategies, obviously, this is, we can't go over them all here. You've really got to, you know, sign up for the course. Uh, and by the way, this course is special, is special to members of Dallas Trading Floor. So it's a very good deal. Believe me, I paid more for this course when I took it. And I thought it was worth every penny. I, I tell you, this is absolute truth. I went out and took the course. And within a few weeks, I had made over $1,000 just trading Gavin's strategy. So fantastic uh, course really really worth it um i wanted you to explain this one this is a really interesting one this is a covered call type of strategy it's called the wheel and it's really intriguing because i think that you know it's it's an income strategy that i think can really help a lot of people could you just go over that a little bit gavin yeah sure so this is another of my sort of bread and butter strategies 
um, more of a, I, I kind of split things into, into 50, 50. So long term, um, kind of in trading strategies and the, the wheel kind of goes into more of that long term investing strategy, uh, like a covered call, um, where you're taking ownership of a stock and you're selling calls against it. But with this one, we start by selling a put. Um, and then if the market drops below that put strike, we take ownership, we collect the dividends and we sell covered calls against it. And we, we keep that process going. Um, it's, it's quite advanced as well. Um, but there's lots of rules and regulations and things that you can um, uh, put into that trading strategy. Um, I, I like to use it on ETFs um, because they're a little bit more stable. They don't have earnings risk, things like that every quarter. Um, and they're less likely to suffer those massive drops that you might see in one of these growth stocks, um, you know, that can potentially drop 10, 15% on earnings, which you really don't want when you're doing a wheel trade. Um, so I really like it on sector ETFs, country ETFs, things like that. Um, but it, you can generate a huge amount of premium because you're selling puts, you're, you're collecting dividends and you're selling calls as well. So you've potentially got sort of three income trade on a particular ETF, but you can use it on stocks as well, right? Well, thank you so much, uh, Gavin, for you know, for 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 uh, for being with me here today. I uh, just wanted to reach out to people. We have a special deal on this. This course is not taught. I think it's twice a year. Is that right? It's it's taught the, the course, uh, Gavin. Usually about three four times a year. Three yep. four so times a year. Starting um, uh, March thirty. It's this one starts March thirty. Um, we have a special offer. Um, if you're interested. You know, click on that link below because uh, it'll take you right to the sign-up page. And so, click on that link, and um, you know, and I hope to see you on 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 uh, um, on on this one. But click the link below, and uh, you should be able to. Uh, you know, hopefully, it will <laughs> it will work. My technical expertise is not the greatest, but it is very very worthwhile. This is a fantastic course. I've taken it myself. I highly recommend it. And I hope that you'll take advantage of this offer because it probably won't come back again. So um, with that, uh, I, will, I, I will talk with you later. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video to the end and happy trading. Yeah. Sorry about that, everyone, but uh, it went a little bit longer than we thought. But uh, really, really recommend the course by Gavin. It's excellent. Uh, if you're watching on um, TikTok, uh, uh, you can get to the you you can get to the uh, the the uh, uh, the offer by just going to my bio, clicking on the link, and it's the first one. It gives you a special deal on that, so very very worthwhile. Let's answer two more questions that we have from um, on on, Del on Dallas Trading Floor uh, that we have from um, from. Uh, um, from YouTube, so thanks for thanks for uh, thanks for that. Um, all right, so let's <coughs> go over here. Um, go videos. Uh, the price of the course is one forty nine. Oh, I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. Um, the the correct price. <laughs> I have technical problems here. Sorry about that. Um, uh, the redirect the redirector price is one ninety is one seventy nine. Okay, the, the, it's it's it is it is one seventy nine. I'm sorry, I got that I got that wrong. Uh, it it is one seventy nine for the for the price. So I apologize for that, but it that's it's definitely well worth it. Thank you for bringing that up. I'm going to make sure that that's uh, uh, that that's right. I I, I I I you know that's a typo, but it is one seventy nine. It's very very worthwhile uh, on the course. So thank you for bringing that to my attention. All right, let's look at Kohl's really quick uh, and see what's going on there. Um, I think that's KSS is the symbol. I can't remember if I got that. Yeah, Kohl's, that is the symbol uh, for it. Super duper great. Thank you uh, so much. Um, all right, well, let's look at Kohl's. Um, you know, just really moving down, but it does look like it's got a bounce. I just, I really, unfortunately, in this kind of market, I'm just really leery about buying anything below that uh, um, below that 200 day line it's just it's just too too risky for me right now so that's kind of my take on it um, that's kind of my take on it all right last question from Mr. Jeet Wells Cargo files for a 9.5 billion dollar mix shelf operating what does this mean 
Yes, I agree with you, Mr. Jeet. I think, I think that it is in trouble. <laughs> I do. I do. It needs more cash. You see, what people, what they aren't telling us out there right now is that we have a cash problem. We have a cash problem out there. Uh, this is also why it's not a bad idea to possibly take a little bit of cash out of one of your bank accounts and keep it at ha keep it at your house because uh, I'm having a feeling that in the near future we're going to have a problem with ATMs. It's going to be oops, we don't we have a system error, and you can only get out so much money. This is exactly what's happening, unfortunately, in the UK right now. We have limits on the amount that, of cash that you can withdraw. I do like gold and I do like silver, but really right now the the most important asset is cash. So cash, and I don't mean cash in the bank. I mean cash like in your wallet cash. That's what I mean. So you probably want to have a little bit of cash on hand, at least some, uh, maybe a few thousand dollars because we may get problems. We The banks may lock up here a little bit. Um, again, I'm not predicting this, but I think that there's an ample, uh, ample indication that this may happen. So be very, very, very careful, uh, here. All right. Well, thank you everybody. And, and, uh, I thank you go videos for telling me about my incorrect, the price, the correct price for the course is 179. Um, it's, 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 that's the correct price. And, uh, I, I, uh, I, I, I misquoted it at 149. Uh, that was a typo on my part, but it is 179 absolutely well worth it. I paid well over, I, well, I paid almost $500 for the course, and, and believe me, it was worth it. I made the money back in about a month, so I think it's, I think it's a very, very good course. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow, of course, uh, uh, on Dallas Trading Floor. If you could, uh, if you could smash that like button, not the little like button like that. I'm talking the big like button. Please like the show. That helps us get out to a lot of people. So smash the like button, and uh, we will be back. Uh, we will be back tomorrow uh, with more, uh, with more of your questions. So um, till then, everybody, happy trading.